let's get going. I have my other cameras running. I have three cameras here that run and record separately, folks. Um, I just I can't record what I'm streaming to you on my computer, so it's a bug I'm going to have to work out. So I hope you're all hearing me um, and uh, you're able to chat with me um, through the uh, chat system. And uh, I'd like to say welcome to everyone here. I am sorry I've been offline for two months. My uh, main computer here just crashed and uh, crashed in September actually and it took uh, two months to get it fixed and replaced and uh, I'm really uh, kind of sad about that. I missed several streaming uh, classes. So anyway, um, we're going to uh, show you. I've had the, the photograph that we're going to be painting here. I've had it up for probably two hours now. Um, if you've been watching, some of you tuned in as soon as you saw me start broadcasting. I appreciate that. And uh, so this is the photograph that uh, a uh, photographer in Montana whose name is Mark Mesenko has allowed me to paint and even put the video on YouTube. And um, the, the, the warning really is just when you do, you do your own paintings, just don't take somebody's photograph and copy it uh, without getting their permission. Um, a lot of photographers put some very good work out on YouTube and on uh, Facebook and on the internet. And uh, so I promised Mark that I would give everyone that warning that it's a really good idea. They have trouble with their copyrighted photographs and they really appreciate it when an artist contacts them and asks permission to uh, use a photograph for a painting. So I did that and it turns out that Mark, um, when I talked, when I sent him a, a message over Facebook, he, uh, I told him that I had found another photographer in Montana named Patrick Clark who had actually uh, let me use his uh, one of his photographs in one of, one of my watercolor studies um, some time back and uh, it was a picture of a, of a fisherman's uh, fishing in one of the one of the uh, rivers uh, in Montana and uh, fly fishing and uh, ask him if he would ask Mark if he would mind you let me letting me pick a painting or two of his and uh, and put them up on my YouTube site just as Patrick Clark had and lo and behold, Mark knows Patrick, and he said, well, interestingly, the, the, the video you sent me uh, of the fisherman fishing in the stream was actually me. Patrick Clark took a picture of Mark Masenko, and they're both on a, a website and Facebook page together. So Patrick Clark and Mark Masenko both uh, have some very good photos of uh, Montana. And uh, so I've contacted them both individually, but now I know they're actually connected and uh, so uh, they, they're letting me use their paintings, their photographs, and uh, as long as I put this announcement out front, I put links, I'll have links on, the, uh, on my website or on the, uh, the uh, video when I finish. And uh, so here's how I started this painting. I'm doing it in uh, portrait format, um, and it's uh, on 11 by 14 canvas. And so you see I've put a grid here that might have helped you. If you've been watching it for a couple hours, you might have had a chance to even sketch that grid. Um, I also have done a uh, value map, which I talk about a lot in terms of getting values and shades of gray uh, to sort of help me uh, make sense out of this in a three or four value pattern. So this is my value map that um, I'd like you to look at. It's always a good thing to take your, your images and try to make a value map and try to get it down to two or three values. Um, and then just to show you, I did this painting already in watercolor. I uh, volunteer for a local cancer center here in uh, Lakeland, Florida, where I live. And uh, once a month I go in and just stand in their uh, area where they have patients and uh, people waiting uh, to either get cancer treatment or visit their doctor. And uh, I just do watercolors and I painted this for them uh, a couple weeks ago and uh, everybody really liked it. So. Anyway, with that said, with my little description about the uh, using photographs and not ripping off somebody's work and calling it your own, but at least uh, try to uh, contact the, art, the uh, photographer and get there okay. So with that said, let's uh, move over to the easel now and uh, see if I can do it without tangling up my microphone cord. And I see it looks like we've still got good sound. Okay, so uh, here we are, and uh, 
This is my uh, setup and it's going to be a little uh, different setup today because it's a uh, uh, portrait format which is longer than it is wide. And uh, so I want you to take a look at this. I have the sketch already here. I have my photograph here and I have my value map over here. And that's typically how I set up my easel. Um, I typically use a uh, sketch of some kind. I do it on tracing paper to try to get it accurately so, so I can erase it and get it the way I want it. And uh, then I put that over some uh, white transfer paper. It has a white background on it. Uh, and it transfers in white uh, crayon or white, uh, it's not really graphite, but it transfers. So I put that over my gray gesso panel, uh, my gray, gray gesso canvas, and uh, that's what I start to paint from. So with that said, um, I'm going to zoom in on that and get ready to uh, show you that and make sure I'm aligned here. I have couple controls that I can kind of keep it uh, lined as good as I can get it. Okay. Um, I also have a palette here that I want to show you. Where's my full palette here? Oh, I know. There. Okay. Um, my palette here is uh, my standard palette of Bob Ross paints. Um, and I'll go through the paints very quickly. Titanium white, uh, phthalo blue, Prussian blue, midnight black, uh, Van Dyke Brown, Dark Sienna, Alizarin Crimson. I have Cad Yellow, Indian Yellow, and Bright Red. I've left out uh, the green, Sap Green, which is typically in the palette. There's no green in this uh, painting at all. And I have some uh, Ultramarine Violet over here. Uh, the brushes I'll be using is the ones I've talked to you about before. It's a set of Treckle brushes. They're, they're synthetic uh, mongoose. And uh, have filberts and flats here, six, number six, number 10, uh, number six, uh, 16, 10, and six filbert, and I have a 12 and number four flat. So I have some other brushes. I have some uh, Bob Ross brushes that I've used before, um, and uh, so the big the big blender, and I have a, probably in a snow scene like this, I'm gonna use this, uh, this fan brush. It's a Bob Ross brush, which uh, really gives some nice snow effects. Um, I have a, a the rigger, the standard Bob Ross rigger. So I don't know if I'll use all those uh, or not. Um, if I don't, don't worry about it. If I don't use all the paints, don't worry about it. Um, but I do want to get started here with this. And uh, and we will, uh, I'm going to use some liquid white. You see in my plate here, I have a little bit of liquid white and I have a little bit of uh, uh, this uh, product called Liquin, which is a product that makes your paintings dry faster. So the liquid white helps slow down the drying time and it will it takes sometimes weeks for this liquid white to dry uh, the liquid will speed up the drying time so if you want to go over areas and uh, repeat them uh, you can do that so um, with that said let's get over here and get my palette in the right place so it's not overlaying the painting and uh, we'll start with a little bit of this liquid white here um, and uh, I'm going to put it on uh, across the top here, very much like uh, a Bob Ross painting. Um, and I'm even mixing in a little liquid. That liquid helps it run smoother, gets a nice coating on the, on the uh, canvas. And uh, uh, we'll just try to, uh, this, this is really more a skyscape, I think, than it is anything. Um, um, some white here and pull it in. Um, Cause it's, you know, two thirds of this painting is sky. Um, so let's just flip it on here and uh, keep moving. I found out something when I put my, um, this canvas on this Bob Ross easel that uh, I've had for ages. Um, when you put a 11 by 14 canvas like this on here, there's no pins to hold it in place at top of bottom. The, the, the canvas has, the easel has uh, places for uh, uh, a wider canvas, but it has to be wider than uh, 11 inches. So uh, that uh, threw me for a little bit of a loop. Uh, 
but uh, I overcame that by sneaking some tape in the back behind here and trying to keep it from uh, getting too uh, wobbly on this easel. Okay, there we go. That's enough of that, I think, for now. Um, I'll just leave that set here and we'll come back to it later. Um, so for this sky, it's got some very beautiful colors in it. It's got some uh, nice blue in there. It's got some uh, violet. It's got some orange, red-orange. Um, so I'm going to pick up my uh, uh, red here, bright red, and my Indian yellow. A little bit of titanium white in there. See if I can start finding those colors that are, that are shown so prevalent in the uh, photograph here. When I put that uh, lick one on here, it certainly makes it uh, run. The paint really runs a lot nicer. Um, it's almost too yellow. Pull back, get some red, put in there. Make a little room for some blue at the top. Um, pick up a little bit of this violet over here. Um, it's actually, it's down further for the violet. Let's put some of that down here. may not match these colors exactly, but we'll give it a try. Throw some alizarin in there. That'll give it a little redder. There we go. I got a lot of yellow in here, and when I come back and start putting blue in beside it, you have to be very careful or you end up with uh, green. And uh, I don't want green in the sky. So if you could do it right, where you have the red and orange colors overlaying the yellow in here, and then you put some blue on it, you will actually turn it to a nice purple. So we just have to be careful of that. Take some more of this alizarin, and we'll come in down here. Alizarin white. a nice pinkish color here in some of these areas. As we come down it turns more more pink actually. Get down here into the little bit of yellow in there maybe just a tad. Getting a little bit under my canvas now, or under my uh, palette rather. Over here, we've got some more of this. One thing I will do: um, the broadcast is coming out live to you, so the uh, when you see the uh, um, my palette, which is overlaying the canvas here on the final video, which I'll edit. Since all three of these cameras are recording, I will be able to mix that so that I don't overlay it for you and the final video that goes on YouTube will be a lot cleaner than what you're getting through the broadcast. Is everybody able to hear me okay? I just saw somebody put a note that they couldn't having trouble hearing. Maybe it was my voice. Sometimes I mumble, mumble a little bit and uh, I don't speak distinctly. Um, I'm trying to watch one computer over here by my left elbow to see if I'm uh, coming through to you all. If you have a question, uh, put it in capital letters so I distinctly pick up on that. Um, questions will, I'll try to answer while we're going through this. Um, if I can. Okay, we got some. This. Ok, 
Okay, I'm seeing some thumbs up there, so I guess I'm, I guess I'm okay, even if I am mumbling a little bit. I'm going to pick a little of this uh, phthalo blue and uh, see if I can put it in up here without getting green. Picking up that white that's on the canvas as well. Um, so a little phthalo blue, white, maybe a little bit of this uh, violet color here. Trying to give me a change of color. There's a big section of blue that's up here. Um, for here, it's nice and blue in here that blends. If I get that orange, if I get that orange into the blue, that's going to turn it uh, green. So I have to be very careful. Try not to go back into it after I've left it. I just did that. Just what I, I told you not to do right there. I went back over it and picked up that uh, color of <clears throat> the color of the orange, pulled it back into the blue. So you want to try to keep your strokes all going one way when you're painting into another color like this. Sort of get it to blend. You want it to. Uh, you don't want to start doing the old paintbrush on the wall trick here. If you can keep from it. Some nice lavender in here, up there. Okay, I'm getting a little nice bit of a blended sky. One way is to take your brush and when you make a swoop across it like that, to take your brush and then in your paper towel, blot it out. Okay. Okay. Okay, we're getting some nice uh, looking sky there, I think. Pick up a little more over here. I do have a uh, <clears throat> monitor here behind me that I have to turn around and look at to see what you guys are seeing. Um, so I have to uh, watch that. That's how I know where my where my uh, palette overlay is on the video stream as I turn around and see it and then I know I'm painting underneath. Make that a little bit darker in there. Blend it out, more blues. And like that. And maybe even a little more orange up here in this corner right here. Okay. Big Sky. Montana is called the Big Sky State. That's their motto. And uh, they definitely have some beautiful skies in there. Put a few little light cloudy things in here. I don't know. I think this was maybe a sunset photograph that uh, Mark took. Because um, everything seemed to be fairly darker down here. Okay. So I'm still using this big uh, six, number 16 uh, Treckle uh, Filbert brush. I haven't even washed it out yet. I've just been, all this is done with one brush and just intermixing the colors and using my paper towel to, to stamp out the, the, the wrong color. Um, what I have back here in the background, you see if I can put my palette at another place like that. Okay. Now, let's start here. I have, I'm going to use a little bit of this black here. If I can get black and this violet together, it's going to give me these mountains in the distance. Something like 
this. Like that, same mountain comes on the other side of the barn and comes up here. Something like that. Midnight black, ultramarine violet. Picking up a little bit of white in there to sort of lighten it up, give a little atmospheric perspective. Put in a few more darks and other things here. I think my See, this goes all the way down to here in this area. There's a, it does get lighter and lighter. Okay, so I'm getting some haziness in that mountain just by adding a little bit of that white um, over here. I got a similar thing going on, Just leaving room for. Another little building back here. And see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm getting around that mountain pretty good. Getting around that barn as well. These big old filberts, too big almost for this. <clears throat> Put a few more dark variations in there so it's not completely all one tone. I'm going to cover up a lot of that with trees anyway, so I'm not too worried about what that looks like. Um, and then we have coming back in this area here, it actually gets a little darker. There's some uh, another set of, I think they're actually distant trees sitting back in here. They're sort of just sort of hitting back in here. They're hard to tell what they are, but they look like, to me, they're trees. So I'm just going to pop in a few of those things back here to give it a little more, a little more depth. Every time you put another layer, I've got the sky, I've got clouds, I've got the mountain, I've got the mist, and then I've got another layer here of closer in trees. Um, they're darker than what's behind them, so they stand out. So you can actually tell that's, a, that's something different going on back there. Okay. Um, now, I think there's, before I get rid of this blue, I'm going to pull up some blue. There's actually a, some water. It's like a little lake or maybe it's a river in this area right here. Um, and it picks on up a little more of that sky color. So I'm going to see if I can pop that in here before I forget it. Uh, I'm going to leave it in there. Just as a reminder, it sort of slightly echoes that color in the sky. Um, and it will tell you it's water back there. I'm going to put some snow around it and uh, see how that works. So, pull a little bit of this color from the sky down. It might be a little too blue. I don't want it to be so gaudy and so distinct that it pulls your eye down there. That's a little better. Okay, there we go. All right, still have not cleaned this brush out. I'm just using 
my paper towel. I haven't put any thinner or brush cleaner or anything in this brush yet. Um, I just keep going back to it and uh, cleaning it with my brush or with my paper towel. All right, I think that's going to be it for the big brush, maybe. And let's see now if I can take the next layer. There are some trees over here that are a little bit different color. They have a little bit of this orange and lavender together. I'll see what I can get with that. I might still be able to use this big brush for a couple more things here. Picking up the alizarin and my lavender here and see what I can do back here. There are some really light trees sort of pushing up. I don't know if that's, if you can see that that well or not, but uh, sort of pushing up some trees here with the side and the, the brush. Um, and they're, they're sort of a brownish alizarin color. Sort of help outline the back of this barn here almost. Um, probably could be using a little bit smaller brush, but sometimes I get stuck with a brush and I just keep using it. Okay, there, I hope you can see that. It's a slight difference um, in value. I think I need to make, to make it easy for you to see, I'm going to probably darken it more than it really is on the photograph, um, just so it stands out a little bit more on the, the camera. That might be a little better for you to see what I'm doing back here. Um, it's just a stand of trees back there that's off in the distance. All right, I'll leave it like that. Um, over on the other side, there's some trees, but there I'm gonna put those in later. Um, there is some trees that kind of come over this creek back there. I might as well use this color while I've got it. And uh, if I can give you something to look through back there, see that water going behind it, it uh, makes a much more interesting uh, painting. It may not even be in the photograph, but if I can do that, it helps show some more depth. It's another layer. I've got the, the back trees, I've got the, the water, and then I've got another layer of trees over that. So everything you can do to make another uh, um, to, to make another layer makes your painting have more depth. Somebody asked me a question about it. It'd be good to have a reference photo from time to time. Um, I will do that when I um, edit this video before I put it on YouTube. I'll lay the, uh, the original photograph over. I, I just don't have another camera, another way to do that right now with my setup. Um, and uh, so you can see what we're painting from. I have it here up here on my upper left uh, corner and uh, I can refer to it, but I, I realize you can't refer to it. Um, but I do, because I will make another total video out of this before I put it on YouTube, I'll have it on there. Um, okay, um, let me see, I'm going to try to clean up this edge back here of the, behind this barn a little bit, put a little more of this color back there, reddish color. Left that kind of scruffy. Picked up a smaller brush here, um, number 10. And uh, so I'm ready to start on this barn now. All right, let's get uh, get going. And uh, it's basically I'm going to start with this roof. I'm going to pick me up some white with just a fraction of this blue in it to give it some uh, some value. But right here, I'm going to come down. Like this. I 
something like that. And as I go into these other colors, I pick up this paint. I picked up that purple or that, uh, that brown back there. So I want to make sure I wipe my brush out before I start doing any more. Okay, I'll come back and put just a touch more blue in there. All right, I'll blend it just a little more. This thing has icicles hanging down here, in front of the barn. I have a nice white ridge over here that I'll try to get in there for you. It's pretty cold painting except the sky really warms it up. That's what's interesting about it. It's a the colors are tend to be cool colors. But the uh, all that red and pink and orange in the sky really make the make the difference. Mm, see here. All right. Um, let's see here on the I've got some more of this lavender color back here in the Background. I'll pull it down a little bit more with a smaller brush now that I can start outlining this barn. There's other buildings back here, but I'm not going to paint all of them. Uh, be here for a couple days trying to do all that. Um, snow and other stuff back here. Um, I'll leave it at that for now. Okay. Um, I think it's about time. Oh, I've got another white building here that's on the left side. It's got a little roof on it right here. Something like this. And then has a little bit of a bluer cast front on it. See, I'm reusing these colors. I'm reusing this blue that's up in the sky that's over there. Um, that's adding harmony to the painting when you use the same colors on both sides of the painting. Um, it's a nice idea. It's what most artists do by instinct. And uh, so let's see, I'm going to get my flat brush, I think now, one of these small flats here. And I'm going to start working on the side of this barn here. And I'm going to get myself some nice barn color. It's uh, It's got red, I'm picking alizarin and my Cad red, maybe even a little uh, this uh, dark sienna, get a little brown in there, and see how close that's coming here. Right down here, I'm going to start putting in this barn. some windows back there. Same color, maybe a little bit of white in it for the front of the building. Uh, but down here we've got a lot of this 
color. So I'm mixing it up. I'm trying to get a little bit of lighter tones, darker tones, adding some white, keeping it uh, variable. Now see, when Bob Ross would do these kind of buildings, he just used the painting knife. He would pull out his big painting knife and he'd start scraping these things in. and They looked fine, uh, but they didn't have this much detail. He would rarely put a put a, the doors that have this big X on them like this, um, or have windows that were uh, as defined as my windows are here. And um, his viewers just love it. Um, and I learned a lot of a lot of my early oil painting lessons were from Bob Ross still use his brushes and his paints. I'm using some new different brushes now, but uh, I still go back to some of those brushes that he invented uh, for his, his paintings. Um, Bob Ross, I don't know if you know, he, I think he died in 1996, I want to say. And uh, there's a big revival in some of the uh, his old videos are being shown um, on YouTube. I think you can find some of his old videos. Um, and there's a pretty big, almost like a cult following of, of him right now. Um, all his brushes and all his paints that he created, the different types of uh, mediums and things that he invented to uh, help him get his paintings done in 27 minutes. He had to do a 18 by 24 painting, something like that. He had to do it like in 27 minutes because of the requirements of PBS television recording. And uh, so he, he came out with the big brushes. He didn't totally invent all of that. He got some of that from uh, uh, one of his mentors. Um, which happens a lot in art. You pick up ideas and you pick up techniques and brushes. Pick up painting style. So my painting style is really sort of an eclectic mix of all of the different artists I've studied and workshops I've attended and that sort of thing. Um, so as you develop your style, don't be afraid to copy some things and deviate on others. Um, it's really uh, not a bad thing to do. Let's see here. There's a little red box inside of each of these windows here. I may have to get a smaller brush. This brush isn't even quite... It's about the width of that window, but... Um, I'm leaving a mess. I'll clean it up when I put the white around it, but uh, I don't have much smaller brushes here. I do have a few, but uh, see in here we've got all these triangular things that we want to show. probably the slowest part of the whole painting right here. Certainly the sky was fast. I get a lot of this paint rolls up into the brush. I have to get it down to the tip.
I'm glad you all stayed with me and uh, came back when I came back online. I was really uh, bummed out when my computer died. But I have to give a plug here in America for Best Buy. Those guys, the geek squad at Best Buy did a wonderful job by me. They slightly screwed up in their own right, but boy, when they when it was clear they had a problem, they didn't hesitate to make it right and quick. And I had the store manager, the manager of the Geek Squad, all of them were on top of this issue before I got done to make sure that I was satisfied and I got my computer. I never did get my computer back. My original computer actually uh, got fried, I guess is the term. They couldn't, it would not boot. It just kept shutting off. So uh, they tried, they sent it to their sites out in, in Kentucky and sent it to a store in New Jersey by mistake. And that's what uh, one of their big problems was. But boy, when they uh, realized what had happened, they, they came right on top of it and just gave me a full refund for my computer and let me buy a new one. And uh, the biggest problem I had was uh, having to put all my software back on. I had all this broadcast software that I use and I had all the settings and all that. So it was not a happy, uh, happy time for me to have to wait and do all that. But basically Best Buy did a good job and I would recommend them. Okay, so there's the barn. I've got some more white to put on there. I've got some snow to put in the bottom and uh, this will uh, be almost done. I see I left out a little triangular section there, it looks like to me. One area here. Right there. Okay, I think that looks very close to the photograph. So your eye really goes right to that red. That's the idea. This is the focal point here. Even though the sky is beautiful and your eye bounces up and looks around there, you, you, uh, the idea is for you to focus in on the, the barn. And uh, now let me see here. I may try, I don't know. I have this watercolor brush that I use sometimes. It's a uh, Taclon brush, which is synthetic nylon. When I want to get really nice, tight, sharp edges, which you cannot get with bristle brushes, you cannot get with um, even these synthetic mongoose brushes that I have. Um, you get a nice, sharp point on this thing, and uh, hopefully I can get this white perimeter around this without too much difficulty. I don't know. The, the paint still uh, builds up on there. And uh, this is a bit of a challenge, folks. Probably could have just left it gray and you wouldn't have even known it was supposed to be white. but you would see it in the photograph. <clears throat> then you would know. If you can see what I'm doing here, sometimes I get my hand so that even my cameras don't pick it up. <clears throat> I have to hold my breath while I do this. paint out, pick up some more clean paint.
So this will give you a little challenge to try to paint this crisscross pattern in here. See if you can do a better job than I. Which should be easy to do. Okay, now these other little windows here have, man, I don't know, brush, this brush is still too wide now. Maybe I'll go back and try this little flat here that's, uh, see how it works. Like that. There are a few places over here. I'm picking up a little red there and mixing it up, but it's not terribly offensive because these colors kind of run together somewhat, even in the photograph. Um, okay, um, it's an old building. It's been around for a while. So I'm not going to get too uptight about it. A few little windows back here. Something going on back there. All right, now we're ready to start with some more snow here. Some of the snow is clean my brush out there. Um, Yeah, I'm not having to move my palette around too much for you. It's really pretty nice. Yeah, I'm going to pick this white up out of here. Um, there is some color reflection. This little pink that's coming in there um, is nice. I'm going to leave it that way. And then I want to come back and start putting in some shadows. I'm not using my, filber or my uh, fan brush right now. These brushes seem to be doing pretty well for me. Um, I might pull that fan brush out to show you how to put some of the shadows in here. Um, the snow, when it uh, is in shade or shadow, starts getting a, a blue shadow like this. So this fan brush helps do that. Some really nice sweeping colors you can get with this fan brush. It's blue here on the side. Something like that. Because it's, like I said, I think it's a, a scene that's uh, like an evening scene, like the sun's going down behind the mountain, and so it's starting to get in shadow in, in the foreground here, and uh, so that all helps this blue helps tell that story. All right. So anytime you want to get nice sweeping strokes, you can use a fan brush like this, and you'll get some very nice, uh, nice strokes. Let's see, pull more in here and pick it up. Yeah, I've got a few rocks and some things, more debris. I've got a bunch of trees to put in here and uh, pretty much have it done. Um, there is a, get my brush here, get me some dark browns. The rock right here, it's sort of sticking out of the snow. And there's another one over here on this side that's kind of, I'm not sure that's a rock. I think it might be a bale of something. Um, I'm going to paint it as if it were a rock. Um, and then we've got some more of these browns over here that are starting to show up around this lake. Um, 
and there's some, I guess these are really trees and bushes that are sort of bent down over here that the snow is just sort of weighting down on them. Um, a bit more of this brown. We got some things going up in front of this barn back there. Just little details now. This is little calligraphy marks and that sort of thing. Um, what I do with my, I want to put some more snow on top of these rocks here to make it sort of stand out right in here. Big uh, globs of white paint here that's sort of off-white a little bit. It's actually not pure white, but um, a little bit of tone in it, but you can put on some piles of snow. And, uh, and then we've got areas where the snow actually pops up in front of the door here even. Got red in there, I didn't want the red. Okay, pretty well snowed in for the winter, it looks like. Okay, now I think it's tree time. I'm going to stand back. I haven't stepped back and looked at this yet. Usually I do that two or three times, but uh, we've been going for maybe an hour and uh, not quite. Um, it is a fast painting. Um, and we're able to do a lot. That sky really wiped it out when you do a <clears throat> two-thirds of your painting in sky. It's uh, it really does the painting fast. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we got some bunches of trees, some little trees that stick up here. And uh, I think I'm probably going to use my script liner for some of that. Um, I may use this fan brush for a few of these trees on the left here. Um, since I got it out, I've already got it broken in. Um, some of the trees on the left have uh, sort of this wispy looking. All of the leaves are gone, but the uh, you see a lot of the this fan brush is great for that because it's it makes the bristles make tons of little bright uh, little brushes uh, so I'm going to throw a few more in here like this and just sort of tie it together maybe I'll put a few more trees in the bottom I don't want to do too much of this because it it'll overpaint if I keep going over it it'll all paint together and it'll look uh, it'll look like a big blob. Um, over here, I'm going to extend these a little bit more and come back and put in some trunks just to give myself a little bit of things going on over there. All right, now with the uh, with this um, script liner and a whole bunch of thinner, I'm going to get a uh, real runny consistency of my Van Dyke Brown and my black here. And it's gonna make the, the tree trunks here on the right side. We're gonna start them, some of them are gonna be on the back of this river. Go like that, pull up, get really light. The paint is thinner than what's on the canvas. If you've ever heard Bob Ross, a thinner paint will stick to a thicker paint. So always in his final details, he would always get a lot of paint thinner down here on the paint and get a real thin brush and get it uh, very, very liquid. And just, it just comes off very naturally. And you can just keep putting in as many of these as you want. 
and them up as high as you want. And I'll come back with my fan brush in a minute. I'll put some more details on there that make it look uh, more wispy. That fan brush does such a good job with that kind of thing. It's hard to not use it for that. <clears throat> Maybe a couple trees on this side of the water. More thicker paint there. Run them up like that. <laughs> Just tons of trees and bushes and shrubs and kind of stuff out here. Something like that. Now if I come back with my fan brush, hopefully, hopefully it's going to, I'm going to use the thinner paint as well so that it tends to uh, uh, go on easier over the existing paint. And I'll see here, I may run it, but let's try it and see what happens here. Picked up some of that paint over there in the uh, horizon, brought it back down. So that's something like I'm trying to achieve. I mean, it's a little darker in here in some areas. Um, all right. Maybe just a few more things down here to tie that together. A few more over here. Maybe another set of trees in there somewhere. All right. I think I've done about all I want to try to do with this. Um, I hope you like it. I hope you give it a try. I was going to go till 3 o'clock, but uh, sometimes you never know how these paintings go. Uh, I did this in watercolor and it took me about an hour. Um, I'm going to put a few more uh, calligraphy type marks here in the uh, front of the barn. Just kind of clean it up a little bit if I can get some uh, nice liquidy off-white in my script liner again here. There was a, a little light on top there. Take some of this and it kind of might make like little bits of snow that are sort of hung on top of these boards. Just a few light marks here and there. And then come back and put in a few dark marks as well. Might as well put in some of this dark brown. I'm going to put in some... There was a... Somewhere around here there was a sort of a second floor marker or something. It was, showed that it was a two-story barn. All right, folks, I think uh, I don't want to destroy it. Um, this trunk over here looks a little, needs a little extra here because it was looked too fat at the bottom and it didn't taper properly. So I may mess around with this a little more, but probably I'm not going to do too much more with it. Um, I think I'm going to leave it alone and let it uh, sort of itself in. Um, I want to put in my name. I always block print my name. Like right in here maybe. I can get this, keep this color going. Mm. 
mm, a little more color. Okay, I think that says it. I think that's going to be it for now, folks. And I uh, appreciate you tuning in, sticking with me, and uh, going through all my uh, <clears throat> trials and tribulations with this streaming process. And uh, so I think I'll leave it at that and say uh, until I see you again, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Um, and don't forget to check um, Mark Masenko's uh, uh, website, his Facebook page. And uh, if you get on there, thank him for letting me use his painting for this uh, barn. He would really appreciate that. Um, and um, also check out my other videos. I have a playlist with about 80 um, oil paintings on them, or I'm sorry, 40 oil paintings and 40 watercolors. So uh, check them out. If you like them, uh, let me know and uh, give them a try as well. So uh, until I see you again, so long for now. Bye. Give you a little bit of a close-up view of this.